Um, hi, everyone. Uh, I am Ram Ting. I am an MLOps engineer at Bensai. Uh, I joined the team in January to help the R&D team productionize the models and build the infrastructure for our MLOps platform. And uh, today, I'm going to talk uh, about using data flow for local MO batch inference and tell our story regarding moving our ML infra from our co-location servers to GCP and Dataflow Runner. So I'll start with a quick introduction to who we are and what we do. Then I'll provide some context for inference on Dataflow and how it helped us to do high throughput inference jobs on our deep learning models. Finally, I'll explain some of the challenges we face during this journey and how we can tackle them to have a smooth transition to inference on Dataflow. This includes heavy initialization and memory management for models on Dataflow, and also a couple of ways you can extend inference to, on Dataflow to uh, multiple models. So a little about this. Uh, we are a rather small startup with about 200 employees. At Bensai, our goal is to exponentially increase the size, uh, the speed and quality of preclinical research by empowering scientists using biomedical AI and ML to run more successful experiments. And the focus is on the experiments because they are the foundation of drug discovery and development at the preclinical stage. And our customers, which are the biggest pharmaceutical companies in the world, run between 40 to 60,000 experiments per year. But unfortunately, data shows that about 80% of these experiments fail. And this hinders scientific innovation and delays the drug development process by sometimes years. So really the end goal is to bring medicine to patients 50% faster by providing an end-to-end -end AI driven experimental design platform. And we do this by decoding the words biomedical experiments to help scientists bring drugs to patients with about one-fifth of the experiments needed today. At a more technical level, this process of decoding the words biomedical experiments involves three steps. It starts with data collection. So for the first step, we start collecting the data both from publicly available data sources like papers, patents, articles, et cetera, along with internal uh, and proprietary data from our clients, the pharmaceutical companies. Then we organize and standardize the data by using mining techniques and our NLP envision models to perform things like biomedical entity recognition and extracting information from images. And the third step, and finally, we try to understand the context of these papers and texts and images and provide meaningful insights to our users, the scientists in our platform. So by just looking at it, it is clear that this process entails a lot of data and ML pipelines. And specifically, our tech hierarchy for the data on ML pipelines looks like this. We use Beam and Dataflow Runner for our data mining pipelines and ETL jobs. BigQuery is used on our data warehouse. So this is where also all of our input output data sets exist and they are the source and sync of our uh, pipelines. And finally, the third item, which is the focus of this presentation is our machine learning inference and structure, which used to be our co-location servers. Actually last year um, at Beam Submit 2020, our data team told uh, their story and showed how they migrated the data mining pipelines from Spark clusters to Beam and Dataflow. And as an extension to our last year's efforts, now we moved our inference serving infrastructure to Dataflow as well, where we locally initialize our models inside Dataflow workers and do the inference there. So let's take a look at how we used to do inference on Colo before. We used to use this popular pattern calling external services. Um, here within our data processing pipelines, we have a step where we send the data in batches to an API server, which is our colo. And then our colo is responsible for downloading the models from model registry, putting the models into the GPU, doing the prediction, and sending the results back to Dataflow. Working with colo 
had quite a few challenges. And the biggest ones were scalability, maintainability, and reproducibility. Uh, with respect to scalability, we are now working with hundreds of millions of data rows, which are you know, terabytes of data. And we couldn't really run the models in parallel in our co-location servers unless we kept expanding our colo infrastructure. We couldn't also change the hardware configuration and you know, upscale or downscale the service depending on the requirements of our models. And eventually, the interface, this inference service, became the bottleneck of our pipeline. And it would have made our end-to-end -end runs take more than 24 hours if we hadn't done anything about it. Also, Cola has a lot of like overhead. Um, in terms of maintenance. And it took a lot of time of our ML engineers just to make sure the colo is up and ready. Sometimes after development and deployment of the pipeline, we had to debug and fix even non-ML related issues for weeks before the model was ready for production. So we started our search for a viable solution on Google Cloud. And as I mentioned before, since we were already using Dataflow for our data mining pipelines, we soon stumbled upon this pattern of inference on data flow. So what is it exactly? When working with Beam and data flow um, and also looking for doing inference, there are two common patterns that come to mind. The first one is re remote inference. And this is a more familiar pattern and it's very similar to what we used to do with Colo. We set up a dedicated API for inference serving we send the serialized data to an API, get the results back, and we continue the processing in our pipeline. Local inference, on the other hand, initialize the model directly inside the nodes that are running on Dataflow Runner. And here, inference is just an internal call to the inference code where, where the VMs have access to GPUs, load the model, and get the predictions without any call to an external service. Local inference really became a viable option after the support for these two features, the custom containers and the GPUs. In order to run a successful inference job, in addition to the standard code dependencies, we need to set up a custom environment. Like we want to install GPU-related libraries. We want to add the data and model artifacts. Dataflow now lets us provide a custom container instead of using the predefined, pre-built containers in Dataflow Runner. So by just copying a few artifacts from Apache Beam-based image, we now have full control over exec our execution environment. The next thing is the GPUs. Um, now we can attach accelerators to each node on Dataflow and define the type and number of GPUs each VM should have access to during the job. And that is really it. Now we can wrap our models into a custom container. And here we use DVC to um, version our models and data sets. And also Basil is our build tool. We create the custom container. We pass that to Dataflow. And now with a few settings and a few uh, changes on our Beam options, we can do inference locally on Dataflow. So, now we are fully moved to data flow, and all of our models are in production uh, there. And this is how it looks like. Uh, we use a pretty standard configuration with machine types, um, N1 standard for it and GCP, and NVIDIA T4 uh, GPUs. We can easily auto scale up to 500 GPUs. And this is just like what we need. You can simply increase the thousands of nodes and GPUs if needed. Our inference job takes less than six hours uh, where we do inference on, depending on the model, 50 million to 500 million rows on 14 deep learning models, including two cyber uh, models in parallel. We also do end-to-end -end tests on every PR directly on Dataflow. So we can catch most Dataflow related errors before it even gets to our nightly runs. Having said that, during this journey, uh, we, had, we had to also tackle with a few challenges. These issues are mostly related to you know, the small differences between an inference job and a standard 
embarrassingly parallel process BIM was initially built for. And the two more important issues were heavy initialization for of large models and the VMs and the memory management around it. So I will talk about input management um, where we try to understand the input data and make the inputs ready for inference on data flow. Then the next item is about heavy initializations of our large models and how using setup functions of our do function classes and patterns like shared model objects could help properly load the models. And finally, we take a close, closer look at what happens really inside each VM in terms of parallelism and how to adjust that for an inference job. Input management is really nothing new. Uh, if you work with Beam and have to deal with external and unreliable sources, you already know how important it is to understand the data and know how things could go wrong. This becomes even more important if your model accepts variable input links where each data sample may take up a different size of your GPU memory. Here, batching becomes a very useful transform to have prior to the calls to the inference. It also it, it both helps us prevent unnecessary model initializations and also to use the GPU efficiently. There are a couple of you know ready to use transforms in the SDK, like batch elements and group into batches. They differ a little bit in you know how they do the batching, and depending on the application, you might prefer one. I won't get into the details. Just overall, make sure you don't pass the elements one by one to your transform. Aside from batching, there are a couple of small things that may help when feeding the data to your model. For instance, in our case, we sometimes deal with very large sentences. So we usually cap the max size of our sentences and also sort them to do inference on our longest sentences first. This helps us fail um, as fast as possible if we face memory issues, but it also helps to do dynamic padding as well to use the GPU memory efficiently and not waste memory space on unnecessary paddings. So after this, now you have your input and hopefully you have a well-behaved uh, peak collection of batches that are ready to be fed into the model. Now it's time to initialize it. Here, first and foremost, make sure you use the life cycle of the do function classes properly and do the heavy initialization on the setup function instead of the process or even start bundle. And then if possible, use the shared model pattern. So the shared model object was introduced in Beam SDK version 224. And lets you share a large object in memory between the threads that are running in the same process. So it's about sharing between the threads. So it doesn't necessarily solve all of our you know, out of memory issues because, it, because of this, but it is still a good practice and helps you be sure you don't do unnecessary initialization. This becomes even more important if you don't put the model artifacts inside the container during build time and have to download it from, say, a model registry at runtime. After this step, now you're ready to process the batches and you do inference. The only point left really is to be aware of how your jobs are parallelized inside each worker. Beam is really, really good at abstracting out these details. And so for most of the tasks, we can safely treat each node, each virtual machine as, as basically an atomic unit of computation. And we usually don't care much about how our do function classes are instantiated and run in each worker. For inference, however, it is a little different. The GPU resources we attach to each worker is shared between all the instances of our code inside the node. And each GPU itself is basically parallelizing a batch itself. So in contrast to a standard embarrassingly parallel process, we don't need to have multiple running processes per worker, and then a lot of threads per process. This is the default configuration for data flow, though, where 
usually depending on the number of vCPUs, it spins up multiple workers and each worker starts up to 300 threads, if I'm not mistaken, for a batch job. And this on its own could completely overload the GPUs and break the pipeline. So when deploying an inference job, make sure you're configuring the right number of workers and threads for your model using the SDK worker parallelism and the number of worker harness threads. For now at Bensai, we took a simpler approach and instead of optimizing the number of threads and processes, we just used the argument, no use multiple SDK containers to only have one process and explicitly set the number of worker threads to one. This simplifies our model configs and means we exactly know there is a one-on-one -on -one mapping between the number of VMs and the containers, the processes and the GPUs, even though we may not be using our resources in the most optimized way. Okay, um, you manage your input, you initialize your model, and you also know how to control the parallelism on the VMs. Now, the only question left is really how to extend this pattern to support more than one model. And thinking about this, there are two different routes that come to mind right away. One is to have a unified pipeline that either sequentially or using branches do the inference for all our models, or you deploy an independent pipeline for each model and use your orchestrator to monitor the jobs. When using one pipeline, it may make sense to use this approach if, say, your models are very coupled. Maybe your models share the same architecture, the same input signature, they need the same hardware configuration and have the same training cycle, or there are applications where you may want to do you know, A-B testing. So in these cases, you may not want to deploy independent pipelines, and it makes sense to do everything in one pipeline. Having said that, you should pay attention to memory management. And the fact that most of the configurations and CLI arguments that we discussed so far, at least for now, are applied at a pipeline level. And this means when you pass an image, for instance, or choose the disk space or the GPU type, you can't change that for a specific P transform or a specific model. So if your models are completely independent and have different computational requirements, it may be easier to simply use your orchestrator to deploy independent standalone jobs and keep each pipeline as simple as possible. In practice, uh, and again, at Bensai, we use a hybrid approach where for larger models, we, we you know, distinct different architectures, we deploy independent jobs, and for some of our smaller models that really share the input and architecture and are coupled both in code and artifact, we use a shared pipeline. And this is pretty much it. Um, we know that it was not, it's not the end here. As explained earlier, we moved our pipelines to Beam last year. Um, this, was, this year was the inference, and there are still things to optimize and think about. Um, this may include creating custom machine types or finding a way to automatically choose the right number of you know, threads or processes for each model. Another thing is that independent pipelines scale on their own and they don't share data with each other. So especially if you don't submit the jobs at once and at the same time, there are scenarios possible where like one pipeline may auto scale too much while the other jobs are start. It's not a problem for us. We kick off for the jobs at the same time and we limit the maximum number of machines per pipeline. Having said that, it'll be nice to have better ways to control the scaling of these independent jobs. And this really goes to the next point, which is hopefully soon, uh, we, we will have the support for multi SDK, multi container jobs and data flow. And if that's available, along with more granular control over, over hardware configuration, maybe say per P transform, for instance, 
we would if this would make beam and data flow very powerful tools for doing inference then maybe we can go back completely to the idea of having a unified platform where even possibly the scaling of transforms are managed by data flow so to wrap it up uh, we talked a little bit about inference on data flow as a feasible option and how it's done we then spend some time on possible challenges you may face during implementation, especially for larger models when the initialization is important. And in the end, we took a little closer look at memory management and worker parallelism and how to configure the beam options to make data flow ready for inference. Now, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer. <laughs>